We previously discussed how elementary row operations affect the determinant of a matrix. With this knowledge, we're now able to find determinants using row reduction. The idea is that to find the determinant of a matrix, we will reduce it to a matrix whose determinant is quite easy to calculate, and then relate that determinant to the determinant of the original matrix. We just have to keep in mind how our row operations will affect the determinant, and these are the things we must remember. If we multiply a row or column by a scalar k, then the effect is that the determinant has been multiplied by that scalar k. And if we swap two rows or columns, the effect is to negate the determinant. Finally, adding multiples of a row or multiples of a column to another row or column does not change the determinant at all. Here's the idea I just described written out. To find the determinant of a square matrix, we can reduce it to triangular form using elementary row operations, and then find the determinant of the triangular matrix, which is very easy, that's just the product of the diagonals, and then we can relate that determinant to the determinant of the original matrix. This says triangular form, but occasionally we may reduce it to some other form that's not triangular, but still has an easy to evaluate determinant. Let's go through three examples of doing this beginning with this 3x3 three three determinant. We'll start by introducing zeros below this leading one. So we'll add two copies of row one to row two and subtract five copies of row one from row three. That brings us to this matrix here. And since all we did to get from here to here was add row multiples to another row, we haven't changed the determinant. So the determinant we were looking for is equal to this one. One more step to get this in triangular form, we will add 13 halves times row 2 to row 3 in order to get a 0 below this diagonal entry, and then this will be in upper triangular form. Adding 13 halves times row 2 to row 3 eliminates the 13, and then 13 halves plus 2 is 13 halves plus 4 halves, so 17 halves. Now that it's an upper triangular matrix, well, once again, the determinant is still the same because all we did was add multiples of one row to another, and now we can evaluate the determinant by simply multiplying along the diagonal. 1 times negative 2 times 17 halves, so the determinant is negative 17. All we did this whole time was add multiples of one row to another, so we never actually changed the determinant. Let's do another example of a 3x3 three three determinant. You may notice that the first row is all multiples of 3, so we can take that 3 out of the determinant. Now the first row is 1, negative 2, 3, and we have a factor of 3 outside the determinant. This is like multiplying the first row by 1 third, but that has the effect of multiplying the determinant by 1 third, but we don't actually want to change the value of the determinant, so we have to undo that by multiplying by 3, because we're still trying to find the original determinant. But it's very easy to think about it as just factoring out the 3. Next, we can add two copies of row 1 to row 2 to get a 0 below that leading 1. And that gets us here. It also doesn't change the determinant, because we were just adding a multiple of one row to another. At this point, we could proceed to try to get this in triangular form, or we could just do a cofactor expansion right now along the first column, because these two entries are zero, so we're only going to have to deal with one term. Let's just go ahead and do that. So the determinant we're looking for is three times this determinant, so there's our factor of three, and then doing cofactor expansion along the first column, we get one multiplied by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when one's row and column are deleted. So that's this determinant you see here, and that's easy to calculate. It's just 15 minus four, so 11. So three times 11 and 33 is the determinant. Let's finish with the determinant of a 4x4 four four matrix. We'll start by subtracting 1 half times row 1 from row 2 to get this entry to be 0. That gets us here, and it doesn't change the value of the determinant because we just added a multiple of one row to another. Next, to get rid of all these halves, we'll take negative 1 half out of the determinant. So all the signs will flip, and all the 1 halves become 1s. Now we can find this determinant using a cofactor expansion along the first column. That's a good choice because the first column is all zeros except for the first entry. So that's going to give us negative one half out front still, multiplied by this first entry, two, 
multiplied by the determinant of the submatrix that remains when two's row and column are deleted. So that's the determinant here. Then, continuing to perform row operations, we can subtract two copies of row 1 from row 2, and one copy of row 1 from row 3. That gets us here, and that, of course, does not change the determinant at all. The 1 half times 2 is just 1, so we have negative 1 out front. And then we can add row 2 to row 3 to get this into triangular form. So once we get a 0 there, the matrix looks like this, and the determinant can now be calculated by just multiplying along the pivots. So this is going to be negative, still have that negative out front, 1 times negative 1 times 6. So this is negative, negative 6, hence the determinant is positive 6. So that's how we find the determinant of a matrix using row reduction. It's relatively a pretty efficient and easy procedure. Remember, as we perform row operations that change the determinant, we have to undo that change as well by putting factors outside of it. So if we double a row, that doubles the determinant. So we have to multiply it by one half to correct that. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count with calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need...